The Allies were working hard to capitalize on gains made since D-Day. Lieutenant Ben Hodges may have been thinking about the terrible weather, the fact that he had less than 100 hours flight time, or about his young wife back in the States. Even across the decades, Ben Smart can understand that anxiety. It'd be, it'd be a challenge. It'd be a challenge, and I can't stand here and say I would do it without feeling any second thoughts. Ben Smart just graduated at the top of his class from Rockdale High School. Now he's working hard so one day he can fly for the Navy. Ben took a challenge, sponsored by Albert H. Small, a D-Day veteran and philanthropist, who urged young people to do more than just read about history. With the help of his teacher, Ben Smart agreed to really get to know Lieutenant Ben Hodges. This is how history comes alive. It's not something that is just in a book. We actually made learning relevant, and he was able to research a soldier who lived 70 years ago and lost his, and lost his life, sacrificed everything so that we can enjoy the freedom that we have out here today. The quest took them all the way to Utah Beach and a white marker in Normandy, France, where Ben placed flowers on Lieutenant Hodge's grave. Okay, of flowers on behalf of your nephew who lives in the house you grew up in in Reynolds, Georgia. In fact, Ben's research uncovered facts about Lieutenant Hodge's final mission that even the family never knew. All right, so he was outnumbered approximately five to one in a storm the worst the region had seen in recent years. It's not clear whether it was the storm or the Nazi Messerschmitts, but Lieutenant Hodge's P-47 Thunderbolt vanished, crashing into a marsh. All they were able to find was a boot and some of the wreckage of the plane, but no Benjamin Hodges after that point four years had happened and gone by. It is a bitter price to pay for freedom, but the sacrifice is not lost on Ben. He's very idealistic and so was Benjamin Hodges. However, I do think that time and place really means a lot in a person's lifetime. And I think they both were born in times of great change. Over several months, Ben was able to unearth new details. He learned that Hodges was escorting bombers on a crossbow mission to knock out German V-1 rockets, which flew over cities, then dropped from the skies to slaughter civilians. Hodges' family was grateful to be able to fill in the gaps. In return, they allowed Ben to handle the flyer's personal effects. Well, this is the field cab. For their part, Ben's family has been so moved they've decided to place a marking stone in Conyers' Walk of Heroes. It will sit close to their own. There's my brick. There's my father-in-law who's in the Navy. There's his brother. We call him Uncle Larry. Ben's father, a Navy man himself, is proud of his son and of Lieutenant Hodges. I think he saw the call of duty and he stepped up and did what he felt like he needed to do and... He, uh, I think he did the right thing. You'll never look in a history textbook in school and read his name, so I felt it was fitting to be sure his story was told. And Ben Smart plans to attend the University of South Carolina, then hopes to get his own Navy wings. And one more postscript, Ben Hodge's widow eventually remarried to another flyer and enjoyed a long life.